you ready to go live for them? Yep. Okay. So mics are on, so anything you say will go that way. <laughs> so, okay. Oh. Stony Creek United Methodist Church. If you can all hear me, can I get some car honks or light flashes? Awesome. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Pastor Michael. I'm excited to see you all here on this rainy day, um, but still a beautiful day that God has made. It's another day for us in his creation. Um, I have a couple quick announcements. One, uh, I want to again highlight 
our outreach project with Bishop Elementary, um, that we are collecting items for both the uh, students and for the uh, teachers there. Um, we're looking for hand sanitizer, tissues, Sharpies, uh, a bunch of other things, and should be in a handout you have received. If not, uh, the full list is also on our Facebook page, and if you uh, still cannot find the full list, uh, you can always reach out to uh, Fonda or uh, Barb um, for that full list um, as well. Um, I also want to let you know um, Homer Turner's brother, Bob uh, Strain, passed away um, earlier this week. Um, there are no funeral details available at this moment, but um, I am sure uh, he and Oma would uh, would welcome a phone call if you have a few moments. Um, and as we get any information about funerals or anything, we will let you know. Um, hold on one second. Do you have any announcements? Do you have any announcements? All right. Well, that is, I think, all I've got right now. Um, if I'm forgetting something, please uh, come on in and let me know, and I'll mention it towards the end of the service. Also, to, just a reminder, the doors are open, so if you need to use the restroom, you can absolutely come in and do that. Um, but I think that's everything, so let us prepare ourselves for a time of worship. Good morning. My name is Fonda, and I will be the litter just today. I invite you to join me in the call to worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also with, with you. you. We will not be afraid of the terrors of the night, of, of the, the dangers of the daylight day hours. We will not fear the diseases that stalk through darkness, nor, nor the, the destruction, destruction that, that comes in the late hours. hours. We will put our faith in you, O oh God, to, to protect, protect us from the monsters in our dreams. At this time, I join, invite you to join me in singing the hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. It's in the hymnal, page 127. It's also printed in your uh, bulletin. Page 127, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. Now, together aloud in our opening prayer, 
strengthening God, you protect us from the scary dreams and nightmares that cause us to toss and turn at night. No matter how dark the nights can be, we know that you are there and will be our light in the darkest times. We ask you now to bless us with your presence in this place as we prepare to worship you and give you praise. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we'll continue with hymn number 117, O God, our help in ages past. Please join together with me in our prayer for illumination. Pour out your spirit upon us, O God, with your word, enlighten the eyes of our hearts, that we might live in hope through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning is found in the book of Proverbs 29, verses 25 to 27. The fear of others lays a snare, but one who trusts in the Lord is secure. Many seek the favor of a ruler, but it is from the Lord that one gives justice. The unjust are an abomination to the righteous, but the upright are an abomination to the wicked. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. With gratitude for God's blessings through the power of work in Christ Jesus, we gather now the gifts of the church for the sake of the gospel. We <coughs> now collect our offerings. Thank you.
All right, if you would please join me now in our doxology, which is on page 95 of the Methodist. comes from you, you bless our lives with the companionship of your people, the freedom that comes from forgiveness of sin, the joy of thanksgiving for earth and all its bounty. Turn us towards those in need, in the name of the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. I invite you now to a time and an attitude of prayer. Holy God, we come before you, your beloved children, those who you give your grace and mercy to, even when we don't deserve it. We give you thanks for the many blessings you bestow upon us in our lives. We give you thanks for this time that we are able to come together in worship, even though it may not be like we are used to, we are still able to gather, whether here in the parking lot of this church or across the internet, joining us remotely. We thank you for helping our community of faith stay together. So God, you taught us to bring everything to you in prayer, so we also lift to you the many things that are weighing heavily upon our hearts and minds this day. We offer prayers for all of those who are sick or injured or struggling, whether physically, emotionally, or mentally, whether dealing with the coronavirus, cancer, whatever may be holding us down, Lord, we know that you have a healing touch, and we ask for your healing presence for all of those in need. We also pray that you would continue to guide the hands and the efforts of all of those involved in the healthcare and healing process, from the doctors and nurses, to lab technicians and research scientists, and so many others. We thank you for their diligence and their sacrifice of their time, that they continue to work to help us stay healthy. God, we also lift up all of those who work so diligently to keep us safe in our world. We lift up all those who serve in our military and armed forces. We lift up our firefighters and police officers, our first responders, our EMTs, and so many others who work to help keep us safe in this world. God, we ask that you would guide them in their work and in their actions and deeds and words. We ask that you would please keep them safe and strong. And God, for those who are far away from home, we pray that they may be able to return home soon. And we could begin to see an end of conflict in our world. We also lift up our nation and every nation in this world. God, we pray for the leaders of the nations that they would find ways to work together to find ways that, that would benefit our entire humanity and all of creation, not just a select few. We pray that they might be willing to put aside political parties and other things that hold them back from finding ways to come together to work for the common good. We pray for our entire world and ask for your spirit of peace to envelop our world. Help us to become the people that you intend us to be, your loving, beloved children. All of these things, as well as those we keep quietly upon our own hearts and minds, we lift you this day in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us prepare for the Lord's coming by putting aside our fears and repenting of our sins. 
If you would please join together with me in our prayer of confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. Excuse me. Pardon me, I'm sorry. Dry throat. Oh, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Please take a few moments now for silent prayer and confession. Beloved children of God, fear not. The grace of God appears, bringing salvation to all. Our sins are forgiven. It is the will of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own, zealous for good deeds, all to the glory of God, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me now in our affirmation of faith. We are using the Apostles' Creed, the ecumenical version, found on page 882 in the hymnal. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy universal church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you now to follow along with me as I read the second scripture of the day. Psalm 149. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in its maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing, making its marker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in the king, making its melody to him with tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with victory. Let the faithful exalt in glory. Let them sing for joy on their couches. Let the high praises of God be in their throats and two-edged swords in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples to bind their kings with fetters and their nobles with chains of iron, to execute on them the judgment decree. This is glory for all his faithfulness. Praise the Lord. 
the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We find our next hymn on page 129 of the Methodist hymnal and also printed in our bulletin. Give to the winds thy fears. scripture reading for this morning comes from the book of Daniel, chapter 7, verses 1 through 8. In the first year of King Belshazzar of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head as he lay in bed. Then he wrote down the dream. I, Daniel, saw in my vision by night the four winds of heaven stirring up the great sea. And four great beasts came up out of the sea, different from one another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. Then, as I watched, its wings were plucked off, and it was lifted up from the ground and made to stand on two feet like a human being, and a human mind was given to it. Another beast appeared, a second one that looked like a bear. It was raised up on one side had three tusks in its mouth along among its teeth, and was told, Arise, devour many bodies. After this, as I watched, another appeared like a leopard. The beast had four wings of a bird on its back, and four heads, and dominion was given to it. After this, I saw in the visions by night a fourth beast, terrifying and dreadful and exceedingly strong. It had great iron teeth and was devouring, breaking in pieces and stamping what was left with its feet. It was different from all the beasts that preceded it, and it had ten horns. I was considering the horns when another horn appeared, a little one coming up among them. To make room for it, three of the earlier horns were plucked up by the roots. There were eyes like human eyes in this horn and a mouth speaking arrogantly. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please join me again in an attitude of prayer. Strengthening God, we ask that you would quiet our minds, bring peace to our hearts, and remove the distractions of our lives so that we might hear the message of your love and grace. Our sleep is filled with both happy dreams and scary nightmares. Help us to turn these things over to you and be strengthened in our faith. And now may the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts together in this place, be pleasing in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, here we are in a new month, and in this case, that means we have a new sermon series. In honor of how October is often associated with Halloween, trick-or-treating, and scary movies, our new sermon series is titled, Things That Go Bump in the Bible. During this month, we will be focusing on some of the monsters and scary things that we find in the Bible, as well as how we understand fear 
and deal with the things that make us afraid. I think when a lot of us begin thinking about Halloween, we, we tend to focus on kids getting dressed up in their costumes of favorite characters like superheroes, cartoon stars, ghosts, Dracula, Frankenstein's monster, and many other classic favorites. Most are not really too scary, but every now and then some can be a bit frightening. Probably not many we would get nightmares from, most of the time anyway. Although this year with the pandemic, who knows for sure if our children will even be allowed to go out and participate in this ritual that we have held for so many years. Now is also the time of year that many TV stations will begin to show a lot of those scary movies and children and adults alike may experience nightmares from some of them. Take out the trash. Some of the classics include Omen, Halloween, Friday the 13th, Psycho, The Exorcist, and of course, A Nightmare on Elm Street. Now those are some scary movies. They feature people losing their grips on reality, the presence of evil, murder, torture, and complete mayhem. Personally, I will take a good comedy or kids cartoon any day myself. The Disney classic Hocus Pocus is a favorite in our household and one that we tend to watch pretty much every year. And it's not that I'm afraid of the scary movies, I just I don't get into that genre very much. I'd rather laugh and smile than scream and be freaked out. Not that there's anything wrong with that, just my personal preference. So what do these movies have to do with our scripture reading from the book of Daniel? Well, in our reading today, Daniel is describing a dream he had from the night before. And as we read along, we find him describing a fairly odd occurrence. Four great beasts coming out of the sea, each one more deranged than the first, a lion with eagle's wings, a bear with tusks in its mouth in addition to its teeth, a leopard with four wings and four heads, and then, of course, the last one. The fourth beast, terrifying and dreadful and exceedingly strong. It had great iron teeth and was devouring, breaking in pieces and stamping what was left with its feet. It was different from all the beasts that preceded it, and it had ten horns. I was considering the horns when another horn appeared, a little one coming up among them to make room for it. Three of the earlier horns were plucked up, by the roots. There were eyes like human eyes in this horn and a mouth speaking arrogantly. Now, I don't know about all of you, but those four things definitely sound like the things that nightmares are made of. They may not be uh, serial killers hunting down people to murder like in many horror films we see nowadays, but I would argue these might be worse. Even though serial killers are a very uh, real reality of our world today, we have seen them defeated by local and national law enforcement. Creatures, as Daniel describes, may not be ones that we have come across in our lives, but if we did come across such creatures, would we feel confident they could be overcome? Now, these four beasts were meant to represent the four kingdoms that were going to arise in the neighboring lands and rule over the area during Daniel's time. From Babylon to Medo-Persia to Greece and then finally Rome, these beasts were symbolizing a progression of time under the rule of these different beasts or kingdoms. And it's interesting the description of the last beast that was meant to symbolize Rome, a creature so terrifying and frightening because of its power and devouring of its prey, which in this case was the people and kingdoms of Israel. Just put yourself in the shoes, or maybe rather sandals, of Daniel or any other Israelite. As you see these different kingdoms and empires come through and they overtake you and rule over you, and there's not a whole lot they could really do about it, at least not if they wanted to live, so not only is the dream itself a nightmare, 
but so was the real world reality. People were being taken over and forced to live under the rule of some of these other kingdoms as they rose to power. Let us think about this in somewhat more recent events. Imagine, if you will, what the people of France, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Belgium, and other European countries felt when Germany, Germany began to invade their countries during World War II. How nightmarish would it have been to see your friends and neighbors being subjected to the ravages of war, being removed from their homes, and God forbid if you were Jewish, being sent away to concentration camps and the horrors that were found within. Thankfully, that war came to an end and those countries were freed and the survivors of the concentration camps were rescued. Or what about the people of Kuwait when the troops from Iraq were taking control of their country? How frightening would it have been to see armed soldiers coming through the towns and taking over? How do the locals protect their children and loved ones? This again sounds like the things that nightmares are made of when we look at it in the context of what Daniel was experiencing. Thankfully, in this situation, coalition forces were able to free the people of Kuwait and return their country to them. Or what about some of the most, un, or most recent unrest in our own country that is still happening? We have already seen many riots, protests, violence, hateful messages, and much more in many cities and communities across our country and even abroad. And in some cases, we have seen not just police, but other law enforcement groups called in to respond. Again, I can't speak for all of you, but those images that I see on the news are very scary. And I mean all of the images, not just one group or another. The amount of violence seen in total is petrifying to watch, and even worse to consider could appear in our own communities right here. So our nightmares are not just in our dreams, but can be real life events right in front of us. Daniel's dream of the four beasts can be seen as very nightmarish all in their own. But then when we look at what it symbolized in the aftermath, the reality was just as bad, if not worse. The nightmare of the dream became a nightmare in reality. And that might be the worst part of it. So what do we do? How do we combat these nightmares, both in our dreams and in reality? What are we to do? Well, if we read a little further in chapter 7, we find the following. As I watched, thrones were set in place, and an ancient one took his throne. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head was pure wool, or like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out of his presence. A thousand thousands served him, and ten thousands times ten thousands stood attending him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. I watched them because of the noise of the arrogant words that the horn was speaking. And as I watched, the beast was put to death, and its body destroyed and given over to be burned with fire. As for the rest of the beasts, their dominion was taken away, but their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. So some great being has come and proclaimed judgment on these four beasts. But the story continues on, and we read that, As I watched in the night visions, I saw one like a human being coming with the clouds of heaven. And he came to the Ancient One and was presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship, that all peoples, nations, and languages would serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. Hmm. Sounds a little familiar, doesn't it? One like a human being? So one that maybe was both human and divine? This one is given dominion and glory and kingship. Hmm. Dominion that is everlasting and kingship that cannot be destroyed. Who could this be talking about potentially? I wonder. I feel like we have heard this story or a very similar one once before. 
course, I am talking about Jesus. Now, I'm not claiming that Daniel's dream is definitely proclaiming the coming and rule of Jesus, but you have to admit there are some definite similarities that we find here. Jesus was both human and divine. Jesus and God have dominion over all creation and are everlasting. So it would be very easy to see how a reader would see Jesus being described in this part from Daniel. And what is great about these passages that follow our original reading is that they offer us some comfort and confidence. <clears throat> they tell us how the beasts are defeated. The scary, nightmarish creatures that we feared have been defeated. And the real-life nightmares they symbolize have also been defeated. God is triumphant over all nightmares and reigns forever. But does God still do this for us today? Is God still defeating the nightmares in our own dreams as well as the nightmares in our world? Well, I suppose that depends on what you believe and how you understand God's work in the world. It depends on how you understand the world and the creation in which we live. One could make the argument that God and Jesus were active with the Holy Spirit when World War II ended and countries were freed and the survivors of concentration camps were rescued. One could make the argument that God's hand was active during the conflict in Kuwait and helped to free those people. One could even make the argument that God is active in the situations in our cities as news that might have been buried in the past has instead come to light through social media and other internet platforms. When it comes to the nightmares of our dreams, God can be active there too. We awake from our dreams and our nightmares. We still may feel upset or even stressed by those dreams, but we have been freed from them by waking up. And for some, things like prayer can help to lessen that stress and bring us peace from the memories of those nightmares. God's presence and action can be found here. It all depends on us. And I say it depends on us because it ultimately comes down to how we interact with God and our relationship with God. Do we easily allow God to be present in our lives and active? Or do we try to push God away and ignore his desire to be in relationship with us? Do we turn to God when we are afraid and shaken? asking for his peace and comfort? Do we tr or do we try to just deal with everything on our own and ignore the Holy Spirit's presence? God is always there, but it is still at some level coming down to our free will. And if we want to be in relationship with God, who desires to be in relationship with us? We have to remember that there are scary things in life and in our dreams. And it is how we choose to deal with them that affects us and our lives. As you leave here later today, I ask that you would contemplate your relationship with God. Do you trust God? Do you bring everything to God in prayer? Do you open yourself up to God? Do you seek the protection and grace of God? Consider these questions and think about what your answers might be. Our God is an all-powerful God. Our God is the God of grace and unconditional love. Our God wants to be in relationship with us. Our God can defeat the nightmares of our dreams and our realities. I pray that you always open yourself up to God's love and grace, and I pray that you find joy and comfort in that relationship with him. Amen. If you would please turn to the handout in your bulletin as we prepare to celebrate communion. Um, it is on pages 15 and 16 in the hymnal, but again, also in that handout that you have. Um, and I'm hoping everyone has brought their own Jesus or has gotten one of the little uh, disposable cups and wafers as we will be using those as well. If The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. 
It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit in us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. And so Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now the confidence of children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. And the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. In the United Methodist Church, we practice open communion. And what that means is that the communion table isn't owned by me or by this church or even by the denomination. It's owned solely by Jesus Christ. And he has invited everyone to come and partake. It doesn't matter your age, your race, your ethnicity, your sexual orientation, your financial standing, your social standing. All those boxes and ways we try to divide ourselves up into, he doesn't see any of that. We are all beloved children of God in the eyes of Jesus Christ, and he welcomes us all to partake. This morning we are celebrating communion a little differently than we're used to. Um, everyone hopefully has their, their bread and their juice with them. <coughs> I invite you now, the body and blood of Christ, shed and broken for you and all the world, you may now receive your communion elements.
Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And if you would join me now in our closing hymn number 474, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. Beloved children of God, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation to live in hope today and always. Love your enemies. Pray for those who oppress you. Answer evil with good. Give to those in need, for yours is the kingdom of God. Go now in peace and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you.